45 weeks in jail is a trade-off. Well, he's got cuffs. I'd rather go to fucking juvenile prison than this. You go to treatment or get 45 weeks. What the fuck is this treatment? Send me to JRA. This is fuck. You guys are all crazy. I love you, Brits. I don't consent to shit. What the fuck? I was a bad guy, a criminal, a dealer, and an addict. But now I'm on the other side. My name is Bullet. I'm an extreme interventionist. When a child becomes a threat to themselves or to others, when all else has failed, families reach out to us. Over the past 20 years, my team and I have battled to save over 1,200 kids from jail or death. My partner, Tony, he lost his son and brothers to drugs. He's committed to doing whatever it takes to helping others avoid that fate. You're worth it to your family. The madness has got to stop. Lauren, an abusive childhood and reckless youth gives her the unique ability to connect with kids on the brink. You will never forget this age, ever. Mike, my oldest friend, I rescued him. He was near death, living on the streets. Now he's joined my team. There is a kid out there who really, really wants it. Some people have a problem with what we do. They say it's upsetting, traumatic. What I say to them, if it was your son or daughter, we're exactly who you'd want to call. We are the extractors. Right now, things are really bad, and my sisters are beyond out of control. They are completely rampant. Brittany is a meth addict. One time when I was digging through the couch for the remote, I had almost got stabbed by a needle. We need help now. And if this continues, they're going to end up dead or end up in prison. They both have multiple felonies for stealing and assault charges. They've robbed every store around here. They are probably not the most willing two young ladies in the world to uh, want to get help. No, either one of them. The hardest will be Brittany. Paige might be able to talk something that they do. And I really need help. I hope. I do not want to plan a few for my grandkids. I, I can't. This is a case we had to take. Marysville is like a thousand small towns that Tony and I have been to. Bored teenagers looking for something to do, they turn to drugs. But I don't think this is one of those typical cases. You got two sisters, twins. Brittany is incarcerated right now. I need to talk to her probation officer and see if I can negotiate her release in exchange for going to treatment. But Paige, she's gone missing. Hi. Hi. Hi, Sue. All right, I'm Bullet. Hi. How you doing? Their childhood from when they were very small was very unstable. Their mom is an active addict. Their dad is also an addict. Their father is someone who has, over the last 15 years, repeatedly gone to jail for dealing drugs. It's really sad. Their mom has done heroin with Paige and meth with Brittany. That's your, that's your daughter, huh? Yes. And they were, you know, they were happy kids, you know. Things really took a turn when my brother went to jail for the first time. It, you know, that broke their family. So then you started to see some real, some real heartbreaking breakdowns, like um, them falling behind in school and maybe having to be held back. And the acting out got more and more. And the girls just never had a, a good shot at, at getting anywhere and there's so much potential inside of them. And Brittany used to be really, really into art. She used to draw yeah. all the time. Yeah, she wrote poetry and Paige is very, no joke, like she could have been a Disney kid. She, she's got that And they're both, they're both really smart. It's just about unlocking it. Talk to me, Myron, about, um, you know, you touched on the phone about these guys that come over here. What's that all oh. about? Hello. 
Oh Hello. my god. What are you doing, you know, uninvited at one in the Get morning? Get out! Get out! In the past six months, they've had guys over every... I'd say every other night. They do drugs in the uh, room? Pictures on Facebook would suggest yes. All you guys, get out. Coming in and out that window. Oh my gracious. And they'll have people climb over the fence and walk across the side of the house and just climb through the window. I have been dreading a phone call saying that one of the girls had died, overdosed, gotten killed in a bad situation where they were trying to score. I have been dreading that phone call for about two and a half years. It's just really hard to say that you expect somebody who's so young and who hasn't even had a chance that you're just knowing that that call could come. And it's hard to say that out loud. I don't think these girls really ever had a fair chance at, at, at a good life. A dope dealer dad in and out of prison, a mom who scores drugs through the girls for the girls, and that's all they've seen in their childhood. So these girls are sadly about this close to not being on the earth anymore. Brittany is safe for now in juvie lockup, but Paige is out on the street. We've got to find her. Myron told us where the girls get their dope from. We found a drug dealer out on the street. That girl right there, you've seen her around here? No. Nah. If you, if you see her, I come back, you'll tell me, right? Paige has been known to hang out with her mom, Sarah, and get high. If I find her there stoned, I'm taking her with me and calling the cops. We're looking for Brittany and Paige's mom. We just, we want to. No, we're, we're not. We're not bounty hunters. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> now you got, a, you got a guy coming. You got a guy coming to check it out. Hey, how you doing? Have you seen Paige? Hey, yeah. Okay. That dude says he's the mom's boyfriend. He didn't appear to be telling the truth whatsoever. Maybe Paige will sneak back into her grandmother's house. Let's go stake it out. What are you doing back there? What do you mean hanging with your friends, man? No, you ain't hanging nowhere, man. Where's Paige? Man, get out of here, man. What are you doing here, man? Uh, you, ain't, you ain't supposed to be here, man. Where's Paige? I don't know. I don't know. Her grandma don't want you here, man. Get lost. Go deal them drugs somewhere else, man. Well, he don't know where she is. Grandma Sue, you're telling me that Paige is in jail? So I know that now both Paige and Brittany are locked up in juvie. It may complicate matters, but it doesn't mean that we're still not gonna be successful and extract both Paige and Brittany. So as long as they're breathing in and out, there's still hope. So here's what's going to happen this morning. Both Paige and Brittany are in juvie lockup. I talked to their probation officer. He's agreed to release them because I promised we'd extract them and take them to treatment. Their grandmother is going to sign them out one at a time. She's going to act like she's driving them home, but instead we're basically going to pull over the grandma and what we're going to do is what we call a car to car extraction. First Paige and then Brittany. Right now we're at the um, Juvenile Center and um, I'm nervous, I am very nervous. If this doesn't work, I don't know if I can keep trying to help them. We have two female minors, we need two female counselors. We have Lauren as always, and I brought in Jen who's very experienced dealing with someone as tough as Brittany. Bullet. Hi, I'm Paige. 
Hey, Paige. Nice to meet you. We want to be really cool with you, and I know you're probably scared right now. Yeah, what's up? You're going to treatment. Wait, I don't have to go. I didn't sign any papers. Yeah, you do. You're in your grandma's custody, and she's turning your custody over to us. So we don't want to handcuff you or anything like that. Oh, where am I going? You're going to a treatment center. Where? In Utah. In Utah? Mm -hmm. Are you being for real? For real. So why don't you come out of the car so we don't have to handcuff you? Okay. Okay, because I'm not going to play you. Get out the car. All right. <laughs> I'm not gonna run away. Right. This is so weird. Yeah. Cigarette. Yeah. Cigarette. 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 Cigarette.
I just think you talk yourself up very well. Wow. Like, what are you talking about? I mean, you're I'm an confused. asshole. Driving through the mountains to get to Montana, really, I just remember sitting in this car and like looking at myself and how fucked up I felt. I felt like a worm, you know? And yeah. the fact that I went that far, it made me feel so gross inside. Like, I guess growing up as a kid, I never thought that I'd go down this path. Talk to you, smoke with you. Not with how you're acting, or you've been acting. Get out of the car, or put out your cigarette. I'm getting out of the car. I'm not gonna run anywhere. You don't have to follow me. Be right next to me. I do have to, it's my job. Just smoke the cigarette, and we're getting back in the car. I'd rather just get back in the car. Put out the cigarette and get in the car, please. Let that happen. This is a brand new life for you, Paige. You can be whoever you want to be. <laughs> no longer are you confined to this town. Take a deep breath <laughs> and enjoy your new world. I love you, Grandma. Holy shit. same DOC, drug of choice, so I, I've been, I've been down, and, um, 
I was really, really fearful for you that I heard your story, you and your sister. I really love my sister. I'm sure she's really scared too, but she's probably taking it a lot better than me. She's good at that. I had a sister named Val who used to shoot dope. And like her, you remind me a, a lot of her. She could sing and she was beautiful and she was intelligent. And uh, unfortunately, one too many shots, you know, she's no longer with us. So like I have this connection with you, yeah. Because I see, I see you going down that path, you know. I don't, I don't want to see what happened to my sister happen to you. I'm scared, but I want to do this. Like I, I want to grow up and do something with my life and follow my dreams, you know? I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. I was blown away by Paige's desire to turn her life around. Paige, you ready? You ready for this? I'm ready to go back. My heart goes out to her and her sister for how they grew up. They never really had much of a chance. Miss Brittany? Yeah. I'm Kim. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I, I, like, Do you want a high school I'm, degree? Well, I mean, I'm I, I'm really far behind. I don't know, like... I think you can graduate here. Oh That's my god. <laughs> That's crazy. Does that seem like too much? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> All the stones are from the girls that have graduated. We want you to have a stone. Yeah. If you're willing put some hard work in, make some commitments there. Yeah. And, and you keep the positive attitude that you have now. You'll kill it. I'm telling you, you're going to be a huge Thank success. you. Huge. Awesome. I believe it, too. <laughs> Good. Good. Hey, hey, Paige, I think we're going to bid you farewell. Okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I feel like when I put my head on my pillow tonight and my team puts their head on their pillows tonight, that we're all gonna feel like we did something good for these girls and that they're in a better place. And where there was no hope, there is hope now. And that's what this is all about, is giving kids a chance. And I feel like these two girls have been given a chance that um, they didn't have 48 hours ago.